So here's the deal. If you're in my top percentage of subscribers that has gotten into both a consistently top 10 pre-med institution and a BSMD program, well, then you're in an interesting situation here because I've had a lot of people in this scenario hit me up asking, what decision should I make? What school should I go to? I'm trying to make this video to give you guys the most realistic decision pathway possible, a way to really frame your decision-making process with all of the different pros and cons in one cohesive guide to make sure that you make the best decision. The ugly truth is that the decision is not as simple as just going with the program or the Ivy League school every time. It's very subjective to your goals for your career in medicine, as well as what schools you actually got into. So here we're gonna start breaking this down logically step by step and then go from there. Let's start with the absolute best case scenario. Imagine that you got into Harvard for pre-med and Brown's program in liberal education. Which school would you pick? First of all, what are the actual advantages with going to Harvard University? We need to start breaking this down very clearly so that you know exactly what you're getting into. First of all, the prestige. The name brand is one of the biggest things that comes with an Ivy League institution, but specifically in the context of medicine, not for engineering or any other application, for medicine, how will a name brand help you? Well, there is some limitation and also some benefit. In the context of getting things like potentially internships, other research opportunities, other opportunities in general. A name brand can absolutely help you. You could score some big opportunities with a name like Harvard backing you up. However, when it actually comes to applying to med school, don't think that because you went to Harvard, you're going to get some kind of crazy advantage over another student who's going to a state school or any other type of like liberal arts school, for instance, that I like to talk a lot about on my channel. The Harvard name brand is only going to get you so far. So understand that prestige in itself, while you might give you some clout in school or whatever, it's not going to immediately just get you into some other Ivy League med school. Those med schools want the best candidates for their school. They don't actually care about like you as an individual that went to Harvard. It doesn't matter to them. The education at Harvard is also solid, but it's comparable to other schools out there. What's the real advantage with going to Harvard? Why am I even making this video in the first place? Well, here's the thing. Harvard is easy. Let me repeat that one more time. Taking classes at Harvard and getting good grades is actually a lot easier than you think. Here's what they don't tell you in those like little magazine flyers or at like college fairs at your high school. Getting a good GPA at Harvard is not that hard. It's currently estimated through various different studies that the average GPA of an undergrad at Harvard is a 3.8. Now, if you're in high school, maybe you don't have any siblings in college, that may not mean much to you, but having an average GPA across an entire group of students of 3.8 is literally unheard of. The average statistic for GPA for students who get accepted to med schools across the nation is between a 3.65 and a 3.7. That means that every regular person, the average GPA, mind, not the median or the middle, if some dude has like a 2.0, he's holding the whole class back. The average GPA at Harvard is 3.8. So statistically speaking, like your chances of being able to get competitive statistics to apply to med school after going to Harvard is extremely high. Harvard is just propping you up for success. Now we can keep debating like the little logical intricacies here. Like, oh, Pratik, you know, they're Harvard students. Of course, they're all you know, gonna be sweaty, grinding all the time. They're all smart enough to get the good grades. But the thing is, if any classes like curve proportionally, you go to any other college, it scores very differently, okay? Just go and talk to a handful of Harvard students, or even MIT is right next to Harvard, so a lot of MIT kids go to take Harvard classes, and MIT is a much more difficult school. Go ask them what it's like at Harvard. Ask them if it's difficult, see what their opinions are. I learned a lot of this stuff from when I did a trip down to Harvard, and I talked to all those different students. That's how I got these insights. So go ahead and do your own digging, talk to those students, and then come to your own conclusion. Now, every top school is not like this. We're trying to think a little bit more broadly with these Ivy League schools. Schools like MIT, like I just mentioned, things like Johns Hopkins, a school that I really actually kind of condemn on this channel. I really don't recommend going to school like Johns Hopkins because of the great deflation they have. These schools do not fall under this advantageous criteria, while other schools do. So you need to take the schools that you've been accepted to and really do your research. Will this school give me an academic time advantage by making my GPA higher, giving me extra time to work on other extracurriculars, or will it almost hold me back in a sense where it's pushing down my GPA and making it more difficult for me to get into a good med school, even if it has this added prestige element, which we've just talked about as not being that valuable. 
The extent of the advantages honestly stops there. I've read a lot of different articles, done a lot of reading, and to see what do you truly gain from an Ivy League school. But in the context of medicine, like things like you know connections or like, good professors, there are good professors at every decent university. There are strong labs wherever you go. Don't feel that only an Ivy League school is going to offer you these things. It's just decades of really good quality marketing and brainwashing that have led you to believe Ivy League schools are that much superior. It's really not like that. Let's start comparing this to Brown's Plimi program. Now, right off the bat, this program is almost an exception because it's the only Ivy League school with a BSMD program. There is basically no GPA requirement. They ask for like a 3.0. There's no MCAT requirement. You can pursue almost any major you want. There's so much freedom in the program that barring financial reasons, there's almost no reason why you shouldn't go to Brown Plimi over any other school. Brown is conservatively a top 15 pre-med school with an excellent Ivy League institution med school. The only better scenario than this is if you went to a school like Stanford and then Stanford Medical School. But even that has some disadvantages associated with it, which we'll talk about a little bit further as the video as we continue breaking down this logic. Now we're going to compare our Ivy League example, just keep in mind Harvard, to another top tier BSMD program that's not Brown Plimi, but it's among the top BSMD programs and has all the advantages. We're gonna work with RPI's Physician Scientist program because that's the program I currently attend. I know a lot more about it and we're gonna go from there. This comparison is a lot more realistic simply because it has actual arguments for both sides. For those who are unfamiliar, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute or RPI has an accelerated Physician Scientist program. It's a seven year program. There is no MCAT requirement. The GPA requirement is to maintain a 3.5 over each of your semesters in the program. And in the end, they basically ask you to do a total of 400 hours of some kind of volunteering related activities and one summer internship. That's the extent of the requirements of the program. The main advantages of being at RPI's program are the time saved, the money saved, and the peace of mind knowing that you do not have to apply to medical school. I went over each of those points very quickly in a couple seconds, but they are actually huge. If I had to run an estimation for the amount of time that I saved beyond the one to two years from going down the traditional pathway, it could be up to 2,000 hours of med school related work from applications to MCAT that all gets erased to zero by joining a top tier BSMD program. When you skip the entire med school process, it's huge. Now on the flip side of this, let's say you get on the traditional path, right? Realistically, getting into med school off rip from a four year undergrad is extremely difficult. It's very, very unlikely, even for the best candidates, simply because med schools discriminate by age. It's a real thing that they do. If you're applying as a 21 year old to med school, med schools want you to wait, to take another year to build your experiences and your maturity and then come. So for most of the top tier students, it takes four years of undergrad plus one gap year and then four years of med school to finally earn their MD. That's a nine year journey. This BSMD program allows you to do it in seven years, so instantly you're saving two years and all of the money that comes with that because you know you don't have student loans accruing and things like that. Now we've almost kind of reached like the core argument. One of the things that people really, really use to justify going to an Ivy League school over a traditional pre-med pathway. It's very common for people to acknowledge the following points and then ask this question. What about the quality of the med school? We're not exactly comparing you know, apples to apples here. If I go to a med school that's as prestigious as Harvard Medical School by going down the traditional path, as opposed to a med school like, say, Albany Medical College, this gets brought up a lot, won't I get better residency matches in the future? Won't my career in medicine become better by going to a better med school? This argument actually has some merit because every medical school is associated with like a hospital. And as part of you know, both the school and the hospital, there are some departments that are simply stronger than others. If we take Albany Med, for instance, their neurology department is known to be strong. So when you're going down the pathway of doing like your rotations and eventually you go on to like try to apply to residency programs, if you come from a school with a good uh, medical background in that field, for example, in neuroscience, people get really good matches from Albany Medical College into fields like neurology and even sometimes neurosurgery. However, that's not the case for every single department. Now, there are pros and cons to every school, every med school's different departments. But a school like Harvard has a lot of really good top tier programs for your rotations and they have a good track record of placing people into residency programs. Now again, there's another logical loophole that people fall into is that they take these residency like track record placements from a school like Harvard, which are fully 
open and available online if you're interested. You can literally look up Harvard 2023 matches residency and find an entire document of all the students from their school and where they matched into residency programs. Here's the deal. People take those statistics for a school like Harvard and then Albany Med, and they compare them and they say, whoa, look at this. Harvard matched a bunch more kids into uh, anesthesiology and neurosurgery than Albany Med did. Well, here's the deal. Students who come to Harvard Medical School are the best recruited students in the entire country. Albany Medical School is an excellent med school that has a lot of really, really bright and talented kids. But Harvard Med is Harvard Med. You can't just directly correlate the residency matches to the med school. What about the students who put in that work? You're taking the best students in the nation and seeing where they ended up and then comparing it to other students. Like that's not a fair comparison to be making. Of course, Harvard Medical School is going to do its best to prepare students. If you guys aren't already familiar, once you get into med school, med schools try their absolute best to make you become doctors because they're really invested in your success. Every med school is going to push their kids to the, their, their limits and get the best out of them, try to get them those good residency matches. But simply looking at these statistics and just you know, pushing Harvard to the forefront, saying that they're doing all kinds of like new things because their students put in a ton of work and scored extra well on those exams because they're simply on average brighter students is not really a fair comparison to be making. You're better off thinking about you and your context within a BSMB program and an Ivy League school rather than these statistics that are blatantly skewed. The last scenario that we have to break down before we're able to come full circle on this is comparing our Harvard Ivy League pre-med school to a low-end BSMD program. Now, this is not meant to be used as an insult. I'm simply using the school to exemplify my point. Let's take Drexel University's BSMD program. It's an eight year long program, so not that much time saved. You also need to maintain a 3.6 GPA, which is on the higher side, as well as take the MCAT and score a 513, which is higher than what most BSMD schools require. On top of that, your MCAT score has like subsection minimum score requirements, which basically like push very close if you add them all up to 513, it adds up to like 511. So you're probably need to going to study really, really hard and score like effectively a 90th percentile-ish score to maintain your seat in the program. On top of that, they require other extracurriculars as part of the Drexel curriculum. And then the med school that you end up going to is kind of in a questionable state. Drexel is undergoing some other problems with their med school and their hospital. What is the real outlook for you here if you join this program? It's one thing if this is the only BSMD program or good quality pre-med school that you got into, sure, you can go for it. But if your other option is to say go to Columbia University, well, then you're going to want to think about this a little bit differently. On one side, how much time and money and mental peace do you save by going into this program? And on the other side, how much do you stand to gain by not joining it? I've just thrown a ton at you in this video, so we're going to organize everything that I've talked about into a clear diagram that'll pinpoint exactly where your schools lie and how, what decision you should make given those scenarios. So to help guide the decision making process, I've put together a BSMD acceptances table. We're going to go over these four scenarios one by one, and then you're going to take whatever schools you've gone into with your reasonable judgment and place them into these different tables, these different scenarios to come to the final conclusion of what decision is likely the best to make. If you're going to still go with the pre-med school, just remember to ask yourself and keep in mind, how much work are you willing to put in? And what is your end goal? What is your actual goal with going down the pre-med pathway? What do you hope to gain from it, especially over a BSMD program? And then also know how much work you're willing to put in. Know that you're gonna have to take a gap year. There's, you're still gonna have to take your MCAT. There's a lot of different stressors that are involved. Just keep all those things in mind. As long as you're cognizant of them, there's nothing like inherently wrong with going down the traditional pathway and chasing that Harvard Med. Just know how much work you're going to need to put in. That it's not gonna come as easy. And it's likely going to be a lot harder than it was for you to get into say Harvard in the first place. For scenario number two, let's say you got into that top tier pre-med school and then one of the low end BSMD programs like Drexel that we talked about. Your best option is likely going to be to go with the pre-med school. Now the thing is, this is a little bit more subjective because what like defines a low end BSMD program versus like from like Drexel to some of the other options, right? Because some programs might be in state to you, so you might save a bunch of money. What kind of gain will you have? Make sure that if you're gonna go with the BSMD program that you've done your research, right? You know that this BSMD program is secure. You're gonna be able to get your seat in med school. You're gonna be able to save that time, do your research, talk to the students, but 
in general, right, if you've gone into a top pre-med school, keep in mind what you're trading off, right? Keep all those things in mind. The decision can kind of go either way, depending on, on how bad the BSMD program is compared to the, and how good the pre-med school is, but the pre-med school is likely going to be your best option. Scenario number three, let's say the pre-med school is like mediocre, right? Let's say it's like, it's not an IV. Let's say you got into something that's like a little bit in the middle. Let's say it's like a, a UCLA type uh, institution, right? Versus getting into one of those like low to middle tier BSMD programs. I'd take something like Hofstra University, for instance, and say that that's definitely like a strong middle tier BSMD program. You're in a situation where you have like an eight year program, you still have to take the MCAT, but it's really well established. The Zucker School of Medicine, for instance, is very, very strong you're likely going to want to go with that BSMD program, right? In my notes, I said, like, if you're going to go with the pre-med, like, that, that BSMD program better be sending your ass to the Caribbean, right? Like, unless that BSMD program is, like, like stinky bad, right? There's not really a reason you should be going to some mediocre pre-med school. You're losing all of the main advantages we had with those Ivy League schools. A school that gives you prestige, a school that's not really that hard, that's really setting you up for success. You're not having any of those perks and you're not going with the BSMD, like, wh like what are you doing here? Like, what's the real point of this? Our last scenario is going to be if the pre-med school is not good and you've gotten to any BSMD program of any tier, right, low to high, go with the BSMD program, okay? If the, this is a pretty obvious one, but just to, to round out all our angles, BSMD programs save you a lot of time. There's a reason why they're so sought after. There's a reason that I go to one. In the majority of your scenarios, like you see in this table, the BSMD program is going to be the right call. But for those case-by-case -case scenarios where you're still trying to decide, yo, do I go to Stanford or do I go to a BSMD program? I'm hoping that this video really helped frame your mindset about what factors to consider and what decision to make, okay? Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Pratik. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm out.